Let's, how about a quick five minute summary of your journey into the faith to rem remind the audience of okay. why you became Catholic? I never get tired of telling the story. <laughs> I never get tired. And in fact, my wife and I, we've been Catholics for eight years now, and I have to tell you, I still feel like a new convert. Mm -hmm. I, the excitement of it hasn't worn off. I hope it never does. Yeah. I, I have to blame my conversion on my parents uh, in the long run because they taught me from the very beginning to love Jesus and to love the Bible. And a friend of mine who later on was a, a good, um, in fact, I led him to the Lord. Uh, and then he became a Catholic subsequent to that. And he told me, if you really love Jesus and the Bible enough and you really take them seriously, eventually you'll become a Catholic. And I told him he was crazy. But I have to blame it on my mom and dad because they taught me from the very beginning there was nothing more important in life than loving Jesus and loving the Bible. And as I grew up, I loved both of them. And it was my real passion in life. It was, it was uh, eternal life and to know Jesus, who the Son of God and my Savior. And the way we were taught to know that is the Bible. And so the Bible became a passion for me as well to study it and to love it. And over time... I accepted the Bible from my Baptist tradition, and I didn't challenge that. I just read it with those uh, lens of the Baptist tradition, and I understood the Bible in terms of that tradition. But as I grew up and I talked to other evangelicals, maybe from a Presbyterian position or Methodist position that were also evangelical Protestants, I found that there were some big differences in the way that the Bible was interpreted. And so I started buying commentaries and Bible study books so that I could understand what the Bible meant and some of these key issues where there was controversies. I wanted to know what the truth was. And I ended up with over 100 commentaries on the Gospel of John, 100 commentaries on the Gospel of Matthew. One whole wall of my house is commentaries on Scripture because I loved the Bible so much I wanted to know what it meant. And yet, the more commentaries I got and the more I studied the Bible, the more I realized that there was a great divergence, disparity in what people taught. Were, were you supposed to baptize infants or not? My tradition, the Baptist tradition, said absolutely not. And yet there were other evangelicals that said absolutely you should baptize infants. Another one, can you lose your salvation? Good Baptist preacher said yes. Good Baptist preacher said no. So I had to study the Bible and find these things out. And the more I studied, the more I realized that no one had a corner on this. And there were a lot of things that were not certain in my own mind and in the theology of the 33,000 plus Protestant denominations that I was trying to tap into. Well, I never considered the Catholic Church as an option. It wasn't even on the radar screen. It was so far out. I'd always been taught that it was the perfect counterfeit of true Christianity. And so it was probably the most dangerous thing. It wasn't even on the radar screen for me. But as I began to see the foundations of my own Protestant tradition tremble and cracks form in the foundation because of these major issues of authority, who speaks for God today? Who interprets the Bible? How do I know what these passages mean when there's conflicting theologians? It wasn't the, the church, the Catholic church became beautiful to me first. It was because I first saw the weaknesses in my Protestant tradition. And only then did I start to look and say, well, does anybody, is there a different position here? And then a friend of mine converted to the Catholic church. We had been best friends for 15 years. And he told me he was going to convert to the Catholic church. And I said to him, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. You are way too smart to be a Catholic. But. My respect for him and his slow prompting me to read, I went back and started to read the very first writers, the very first commentators on Scripture. And I had always believed that the earliest Christians were basically Protestant in their mentality, a simple, non-Catholic kind of non-sacramental Christianity, the Bible alone, keep it simple, ask Jesus to be your Savior. But the more I read, and how many times have we heard this on your show from converts, the more I read the very first writings of the very first Christians, the very first commentators on Scripture, they were Catholic. And it rattled my whole world. My wife and I felt that we were falling, a free fall, and the more I read, though, the more I realized that I had to intellectually become a Catholic, even though it was the last thing in the world we wanted to do. That's the short story. When you look back, did it cross your mind when you were collecting that wall of commentaries that that, that wall of commentaries in itself is a visual oxymoron to the yes. idea of sola scriptura? Yes, yes. because, see, I would have taught even when I taught Bible studies and so on then, that the Bible's easy to understand. 
it was written for the common man. Well, Martin Luther said, if you get it into the hands of the plowboys and the servant girls, everybody can interpret it for themselves because it's easy to understand, easy to interpret. And yet, why can't the, big, the best theologians today, why are they still arguing about it? Why are there still 20, 30, 40 commentaries a year coming out of, of Protestant presses on, on the book of John? Or on the as book well of, as different translations. Absolutely. Every year it seems a new right. translation. What is so the even right translation? Just the translation of the original language right. itself is a right. problem. And so here I am saying how easy the Bible is to understand from this Protestant position, and yet I have a hundred commentaries on John, and I'm trying to understand what it means. And yes, the contradiction did settle in after a time, and eventually I became a Catholic. Well, uh, you've been making these journeys to 